it's Wutini from GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. Um, this week, um, I was playing a lot of Dance Central 3, although not as much as I would have liked because I came down with a cold after Comic-Con. I heard there was a bout of nerd flu going around after Comic-Con. I know some people who had it, and it's pretty brutal. I didn't have that. Um, but I also felt like I was coming down with something before New York Comic-Con, so the activity of Comic-Con, I think, didn't let me think about being sick and just made me super tired so that, like, once it was all said and done and my body was like, ugh, then it caught up to me and I was, like, sick for most of last week. So, um, I couldn't actually play a lot of Dance Central, which is sad, because I love the game and it just came out and I wanted to play all the new songs and unlock as much stuff as I could and just keep getting new costumes for people, and, you know, progressing, and, um, you know, but when you're sick and you have no energy, you can't be jumping around like an idiot. Um, but towards the end of the week, I was able to do it, and, um, I actually got to the point where I danced every song on easy, uh, in story mode and unlocked everything there, and I started medium story mode. Um, and the problem is, is, like, I haven't rehearsed any of the songs on Medium, so I don't know the extra choreography that they add in on Medium. And like I was told, they added Beginner, which is, like, a step easier than the Easy level. And that's, like, easier than the previous Easy, but they kind of made Easy a little bit more difficult, you know. And then, so now Medium is actually closer to what Hard was, in the previous game, and then hard, I haven't even tried yet, because I'm sure that's going to be just ridiculous. Um, so they kind of tweaked the levels, because they added a fourth one. Because, um, like, I started doing some of the songs, and I'm like, you know, it's in story mode, so it just sort of starts happening, and then I'm like, I don't know these moves, and whatever. But, uh, it's, uh, it's still wicked fun. I have to say that the live challenges get very distracting, and it would distract me from going into the story mode and finishing getting all the stars that I needed to, to unlock stuff and get a couple of achievements. Um, because it would say, like, live challenges, and it would say new, and I would go in, and, like, my friends who already have the game are, like, you know, making huge lists of, of songs, flouting their scores, and then I'm like, mm, let me try. Um, and on the plus side, um, like, they may have played it on medium or hard, but you can still choose to play the song on easy, and sometimes if you can get, like, on easy, you can, like, get all the moves perfect, so you might even end up getting a, a better score than your friend who played it on hard and maybe botched a bunch of them because it was too much, and, you know, you could maybe even get a higher score. But it's really hard when your friend has played it on easy and then you play it on easy, and you can't quite get their score because they got perfect on everything, and they're getting flawless, and on a handful of moves you get nice, or there's like the one move where the camera, the connect just sort of like goes rah, and you can't even, and you get a, you fail for no reason, and it breaks your combo streak, and it ruins your score. Um, but it's, it's, so it's fun to be able to compete on the leaderboards against my friends like this. I mean, I used to just look at the leaderboards and then be like, no, he has a higher score than me. I must practice this song until I beat him on the leaderboards. But now it's like, it's a little more active because it's like, you know, it's an active leaderboard where like, you see the score and you say, I'm going to try to beat that person's score. And then like, as you're dancing, the score is like up in the corner next to your score and it explodes when you break it or when you don't. And there's a voice that comes on that, like, cheers you along and says, You're almost there! Keep going! And then when you fail, it tries to reassure you that at least you looked better dancing than your opponent did, so whatever. Um, so now that I'm feeling better, I can finally play more Dance Central 3. But, again, it's the kind of game where you can't really have marathon gaming sessions of, like, three hours, like you could with, like, an RPG where all you're doing is pressing buttons on a controller. Here, you're dancing around, so after, you know, an hour or so, you're like, <gasps> and then you've got to take a break. Um, at which point it is the perfect time for me to play my other new game, which is Style Savvy Trendsetters on the 3DS. Um, and oh my god, it's everything I hoped it would be. I mean, I played the demo, I told you how I played the demo, and it was great. Um, it's, it's funny because I got the game, 
and I thought, oh, it's fine, I've got like, you know, four or five days before it actually hits the stores, I can probably even get a review together, like, in time for it to, you know, I can I could write my review to post on the day of the game's release, but now that doesn't seem like that's going to happen, because, um, the original Style Savvy, I feel like within a few days, like, I'd stocked my store, I dressed a bunch of people, I'd, like, earned thousands of dollars, and, like, beaten all the contests and saw the end credits. And I'm like, okay. And I mean, it's not like you don't start, it's like you don't stop playing because it's still fun, and then they would, like, give you downloadable clothes that were, like, special and stuff, and you're constantly, like, playing and going to buy the clothes and then stocking your store and then, like, styling people, and it was still addictive fun, even though, you know, the contests had already been won. Um... But in this game, in Trendsetters, um, they've slowed down the unlocking process quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, I was playing for a really long time before I even unlocked uh, the hair, hair salon or the makeup store so that I was stuck with the boring hair that, you know, I mean, they give you like, you know, half a dozen hairstyles you could choose from, and I picked whatever one I liked, but like, you know, it's still kind of dull. So, you know, and I couldn't get quite the right hair color. I wanted to, you know... So, you know, as the time goes on, then you unlock those, um, and then I still, I've just, I just recently unlocked, like, the guy clothes, so now I can stock guy clothes in my store, um, so that's great, and, uh, I've also just now, I'm about to enter my very first fashion contest, so, you know, like, it's, they've, they've broken it up and stretched it out, um, but it's still so much fun, and the graphics look great. The 3DS graphics upgrade is terrific. Now, like, everyone looks smooth, and the clothes are really detailed, and um, when you give them an outfit that they really, really love, instead of just, like, the hearts exploding around, like, different people have... There's, like, almost a half a dozen different little, like spinny moves with, like, the graphics of, like, hearts, or it's, like, animals, or it's, you know, music notes, or, you know, there's a bunch of different ones, and they all look really cool and very dynamic in 3D, um, popping out at you and stuff. Um, and there are other, there's, like, other places where you can go, you can go to the park, or the cafe, or downtown, and there's, like, different people to interact with, um, there's been no inkling of a romance yet, sadly, um, though there have been some cute boys. There was a cute guy that runs a flower stall in the park, and he's given me some flowers, which he said I could use to decorate my house, except when I go into my house decorating to decorate my apartment, I can't actually choose flowers. So I don't know what that was all about. Um, but uh, uh, no inkling of a romance yet. And I will say, while you're dressing guys, some people wondered, and as did I, whether or not you'd be able to play as a guy this time around. And unfortunately, I have to report, you cannot. Um, which I wasn't... I It would have been nice to give us that option, but at the same time, I kind of understand why they didn't, because then the hair and makeup salons are kind of, you know, for a guy, that's... I mean, yeah, I guess you could change your hairstyle, but you're not going to wear the makeup, and then that would just be kind of like a wasted thing in the game, so this way you get to play as a girl, and you get to use everything. Also, I'm... I'm gonna... I mean, obviously there's not going to be as many varieties of guy clothes as there are girl clothes. So, um, you know, if you were playing as a guy, your outfit wardrobe selections would be more limited. Um, and, I mean, seriously, like, that's half the fun, is, like every day in the game, like, she wakes up, I put her in a cute new outfit, we go off to the buyer center and stock up the store, and then go to the store and dress up some people and make them happy, and keep going. Because as you make people happy, you fill up a happiness meter, and when your happiness meter fills up, then you unlock more stuff. So, um, I will try, probably get the review up later this week. Um, I just want to make sure that I've you know, played enough of the game that I can give you a, a proper assessment of it. Um, I think it's going to take me a while to get through all of the contests this time, since I've been playing for hours and have only just now started to unlock the contest, which I haven't even done the first one yet. So, I ex unless they come rapid fire after the first one's unlocked, um, uh, I think it might be a while. But um, you can look for my review of Style Savvy. Um, and meanwhile, I've got to go back and play some more of that. So, um, 
I will see you back here next week, same bat time, same bat channel, where uh, I will talk about whatever else I'm playing, maybe some more style savvy talk. But uh, next week, the uh, Silent Hill movie comes out, and I loved the first one, so I'm fingers crossed that this, the sequel will also be good. They're adapting Silent Hill 3, which was like my favorite Silent Hill game, so don't F it up. Um, like they did with Paranormal Activity 4, which I saw this weekend, which was not that great. It was kind of actually boring and not all that scary. Um, the thing that made me nervous was um, they actually used the Kinect as product placement in the movie. Um, and Because they show on the camera, they turn on the night vision on the video camera, and they show the Kinect splashing dots all over the room to track motion, which of course when like the ghost thing walks through the room you can see it on the dots, like the dots shift and move as the ghost walks through the room. It's supposed to be spooky, but the whole time I'm just like, oh my god, you left your Xbox and Kinect on this whole time, it's gonna overheat and break. Um, but that that's just me thinking that while I'm watching the movie. Instead of like being scared by it, I'm just obsessed with the fact that they basically leave their Xbox on overnight so that they can tape any ghostly happenings in the living room. Uh, it is a cool effect, though, and I kind of wish that I had a camera with night vision so I could do that um, and see it for myself, because um, it did look kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, don't bother with uh, Paranormal Activity 4, even if you liked the first three. Unless you really like the first three, in which case, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's just more of the same, and so it's less scary because it's the same. Uh, and uh, so I'll let you know next week uh, what I thought about Silent Hill. See you then. Bye.